Yo, yo, YouTube, what's up with your boy, Sports and Fitness Rants? I'm back, guys. Click that like button. Subscribe to my channel. What's up, y'all? Welcome back, guys. Welcome back, man. Got another video for you guys today, man. Thank you for tuning in, guys. Thank you, as usual, for all your love, for subscribing, for watching my videos, for your comments, all that stuff, guys. I appreciate all that, man. And uh, in this video, we're going to do a little something a little different today in this video. All right, you know what we're here to do. We're here to celebrate the 80s and the 90s. We're here to celebrate Michael Jordan, right? Tell the truth about Michael Jordan, right? But in this video, I'm going to extend an olive branch to Scottie Pippen and his fans out there. And I'm going to do a video and I'm going to talk about what Scottie Pippen meant to Michael Jordan, right? I do a lot of videos, like I say, telling the truth, you know, about Scottie Pippen and Michael Jordan and dynamic but in this video, I want to focus on what Mike, what Scottie Pippen actually meant to Michael Jordan, what he brought to the table to the Chicago Bulls and, and, and for Michael Jordan, guys, in this video. And you guys know what to do, right? Turn that volume all the way up, man. I got the facts for you guys. You know that, man, right? These videos are for educational purposes, man. So turn that volume all the way up. Hit that play button and let's roll. So, yes, guys, like I said, in this video, I want to take a break from you know, so to speak, or quote unquote, bashing Scottie Pippen, because that's what a lot of people think I'm doing. They think I'm bashing Scottie Pippen when I'm making these videos. And I'm telling the truth about Scottie Pippen. I told you guys, it's about telling the truth, right? It's not about opinions and, and hating and things like that. But in this video, I want to explain what Scottie Pippen really did do for Michael Jordan, what he meant to Michael Jordan, what he meant to the Chicago Bulls, and his value, right? What his value really was. Because like I said, these days... Scottie Pippen himself is trying to over-exaggerate or trying to rewrite the history of his career and the narrative surrounding his career in the Chicago Bulls and things like that. So for me, from a person who grew up watching this, my opinion on what Scottie Pippen did for Michael Jordan, guys, on the basketball court, this is strictly about basketball stuff, guys. Now, uh, the first thing for me, guys, I think that Scottie Pippen allowed Michael Jordan to do is, is the number one thing we all know about, Right? is that Scottie Pippen's presence allowed Michael Jordan to approach the game differently, right? Michael Jordan himself has said that many times that Scottie Pippen allowed me to, you know, or, or helped me with the way that I approach the game. And what does he mean by that? Well, what he means is that if you look at Michael Jordan's early years on the Chicago Bulls and the way that he had to play, he essentially had to be the number one scoring option, right? He had to be the facilitator all the time. But not only that, he had to play elite level defense on the team's best perimeter player every single night. There was really no one else to help take some of those responsibilities off of his hand. Really? You know, when you think about that, guys, really, <clears throat> right? So the approach of the game, right? Michael Jordan now, when he has Scottie Pippen developing, right? And Scottie Pippen emerges as the defensive player that he became. What does Scottie Pippen do? He took some of the pressure off Michael Jordan on the defensive end. And no one's ever denied that, and no one's ever said that Scottie Pittman was not a great defensive player, that he helped Michael Jordan the defensive end. What's going on now, as it pertains to that angle, is people are trying to make it seem as if Scottie Pittman was guarding the other team's best player every single night because Michael Jordan couldn't do it, because he couldn't do that. That's not the case. The reason why Scottie Pittman did that a lot of nights in that early 90s, right into the mid, right into that dynasty time when, when Michael Jordan and the Bulls were emerging, and Scottie Pippen was, was developing, right? The reason why Scottie Pippen was doing that was to take, to take the pressure off Michael Jordan so that he didn't have to be the number one offensive threat and guard the other team's offensive, number one offensive threat every single night. Does that make sense, guys? That doesn't make any sense, right? Is that playing smart? Is that playing efficiently? No. So what did the Bulls decide to do? When they realized what kind of defensive player Scottie Pippen was developing into, right, going against Michael Jordan every single day in practice, they decided to put Scottie Pippen or, Pippen or implement Scottie Pippen in certain ways or defensively, right? The defensive tactics of the Bulls, right? The mind of a Phil Jackson, the mind of a Michael Jordan, the mind of a Scottie Pippen. These guys understood that. So Scottie Pippen would take some of the burden off on the defensive end, right? Help Michael Jordan with his approach to the game. He didn't have to worry about dropping 35 or 40 points a night and playing elite level defense on the other team's, you know, best offensive threat, trying to shut this guy down or, or hold him to minimal scoring and things of that nature, using immense amounts of, of energy. So when the fourth quarter comes around and they need Michael Jordan to be the closer, right? He wouldn't have the legs. He wouldn't be able to be there, right? So we have to think about these things, right? You oftentimes you'll hear people talk about a, uh, the 1991 NBA Finals, and they'll say that uh, Sky Pittman guarded Magic Johnson, and that's what turned the game. That's not accurate, guys. 
Yes, Scottie Pippen did play defense against Magic Johnson, no doubt about it. We all know that. However, when we think about the defense that Magic Johnson was playing, or the Scottie Pippen was playing against Magic Johnson, the defense, Michael Jordan started every game against Magic Johnson, and they would switch Scottie Pippen and Michael Jordan on and off on Magic Johnson. The one thing that Scottie Pippen was always able to do, right, he was able to expend maximal energy on the defensive end where Michael Jordan wasn't supposed to be doing that. They didn't want Michael Jordan doing that. So, Scottie Pippen could pick up Magic Johnson full court in the NBA Finals, right? For, for minutes here, and for stretches here and there, right? Where Michael Jordan wasn't necessarily going to do that, right? But they needed Michael Jordan on the offensive end. Scottie Pippen, to me, guys, if you think about it, he was expendable. That was his role as far as what he did on the defensive end. He was expendable in the 91 Finals, right? They didn't mind if Scottie Pippen got in foul trouble necessarily. They'd rather him than Michael Jordan, right? Because Magic Johnson is going to put pressure on you on the defensive end, right? And that's what he was doing. Michael Jordan was known for being a gambler sometimes, right? For being aggressive on the defensive end. Sometimes that worked against him, going against a cerebral savant in basketball of, a Ma- of Magic Johnson. And I'll give you a perfect example of, of what I'm talking about, about Sky Pippen being expendable, guys. Game three of the 1991 NBA Finals. You guys know I always bring this up. Scottie Pippen fouls out at the end of that game, right? Why does he foul out at the end of that game, right? He fouls out because of the defense that he was playing on Magic Johnson, the way that Magic Johnson plays. He puts pressure on you, causing these guys to foul. Scott Pippen fouled out. Michael Jordan actually had five fouls in that game. He didn't didn't foul out, though, or put himself in that position because he's Michael Jordan, but also because he wasn't guarding Magic Johnson the entire game. So when people say, you know, uh, Scott Pippen guarded Magic Johnson in the 91 finals, this and that, yes, he did. They both guarded them, and they both guarded him in different ways and are able to approach it in a different way. And Sky Pippen was more expendable than Michael Jordan, which is why he was able to pick him up and expend a certain amount of energy. End of game three, for example, right? Michael Jordan was there when the Bulls needed him to hit the shot to send it to overtime and then carry them to the OT win with Sky Pippen on the bench with six fouls, right? Michael Jordan's never been expendable, guys, right? So that's one way we think about that, right? The approach to the game. Uh, we also have to think about Scottie Pippen allowing Michael Jordan to take rest, right, guys? This is a big thing when we think about the Chicago Bulls finally becoming a dynasty, finally starting to win, right? We think about Michael Jordan having to expand energy on both ends of the court. Like I said, guys, what does that mean? Michael Jordan needs to take rest breaks. But what was going on in the first three, four, five years of Michael Jordan's career in the Bulls? Michael Jordan would have to play 43, 45 minutes a game because any time that he would come out of the game, the Bulls would fall apart because they didn't have any offensive threat. They didn't have any continuity without Michael Jordan in there because these guys fed off of Michael Jordan on the offensive end. Michael Jordan attracted all the team's defense, all the attention, right? And guys like Dave Corzine or Quentin Daly, you know, or Brad Sellers, Charles Oakley, Orlando Woolridge, these guys were getting their baskets off of Michael Jordan's presence on the court. So when he went to the bench, what would happen? If they had a lead, they would lose it. If the game was close, maybe they were getting blown out now. Michael Jordan couldn't take rest periods like that. He could only rest for a minute here, a minute there. That's why he was leading the league in minutes a couple of those seasons early on, right? Or playing 41, 40 minutes a game. Scottie Pippen's emergence, the development of Scottie Pippen allowed Michael Jordan to take rest, to take a rest every once in a while, right? Because he knew he could leave Scottie Pippen out there with the second unit, right? You can, they could run their triangle. Scottie Pippen could run the point, right? They could run their offense, Scott Pippen allowed Michael Jordan to rest from time to time without having to worry about them losing the lead or the game getting out of hand or things like that. Right? That's a big deal when you think about someone like a Michael Jordan because the thing about Michael Jordan that we have to remember when we talk about resting and we talk about playing on both sides of the ball is that Michael Jordan would just continue to play this way. Like You almost have to force him to not do these things. right? To allow Scotty Pippen to take some of the burden off him defensively. Because Michael Jordan would go out there every single night and take on the challenge. That's who he was. But that's not going to make them win. Right? Because they always needed Michael Jordan for what, guys? To close out the games. That's the most important aspect that we don't mention. Is Michael Jordan having the ability, right? Having the energy, the strength, the legs to close games out at a high level. Especially when it matters most. Like the 1991 NBA Finals, like I just mentioned, guys. And all the other NBA finals that Michael Jordan had to close out game five or game six, whatever it was. 
So these are different ways that Scottie Pippen allowed Michael Jordan to approach the game differently, right? His development, what Scottie Pippen brought to the table to the Chicago Bulls, right? To me, Scottie Pippen was never a, a real leader, right? He fed off of Michael Jordan. He was a follower. Michael Jordan was the leader, guys. He was always the leader. He was always the best player, right? He pushed these guys. But Scottie Pippen was an excellent player, right? And he deserves a lot of credit for allowing Michael Jordan to push him, right? To de for dealing with this kinds of stuff, right? And for developing, for emerging, for standing strong along Michael Jordan. I don't know why all these years later now Scottie Pippen's doing this stuff. Yes, there's been many times I've told you guys that Scottie Pippen was not there for Michael Jordan, right? He was mentally weak those early years, right? He developed into a really good player, a great player, a legend. And these are different ways that he allowed Michael Jordan to approach the game, how he helped Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls capture six titles. Scott Pippen was very important. No one, see, man, that's why I'm upset about a lot of stuff, man. I do not make these videos to bash Scotty Pippen's legacy or his greatness. It's to put it in perspective because he is now, and, and other people are trying to, like I said, rewrite the history. They're trying to change the narratives now. Scotty Pippen got his just due. All the other uh, Bills, uh, Bulls players got their just due at that time. They all contributed, man. These guys were all major factors for the Bulls' success, man. Right? These guys played their role. And nobody played it better than Scottie Pippen, man. We watched this stuff, man. I was a fan of Scottie Pippen and the Bulls, man. I don't know why, like I said, these things now, people are trying to change the history, man. It's not so. Scottie Pippen was a great player. He wasn't as great as people are trying to make him. Like you see now, though. He was never better on the defensive end than Michael Jordan. He wasn't, guys. He was never the best all-around player in the NBA. Scottie was never a great rebounder. He was a good rebounder. He's not a great ball handler. He was a good ball handler. He's not a great passer. He was a good passer. The point forward position, yes, he was one of the first people to orchestrate that at a high level. He wasn't a great shooter. He wasn't even a good shooter. Couldn't score like that. But what Scottie Pippen did, he did great. He played his role great, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's why he never won a Finals MVP, guys. He wasn't the X factor like people are trying to make it seem now. And that does not take away from Scottie Pippen. What he allowed Michael Jordan to do, by, by, like I said, by developing and becoming the player that he became, is what made the Bulls great. Right? He allowed Michael Jordan to take the second option on the defensive end. Right? To take rest breaks. Right? To sit down. To focus more on the offensive end. To have the energy to close out the games for them. So shout out to Scottie Pippen, man. I know a lot of people think that I, I bash Scottie Pippen. I don't show him the respect and things like that. No, no, man. Don't come in here in my comments with that stuff, man. Because that's not true. I tell the facts here. The truth about Scottie Pippen's career. I've, check all my videos. I've never done a video telling one lie about Scottie Pippen's career or Michael Jordan's career. I don't have to do that. Because their careers speak for themselves. If you guys grew up back then watching this stuff, you know that I'm 100% on the money. But in this video, I wanted to go over how Scottie Pippen did help Michael Jordan approach the game and what he did for the Bulls, man. One of the all-time great defensive players. One of the all-time great all-around players. Could do everything good. He was a major, major factor, a major, major role, a, a key for the Bulls' success. No one's ever said he was not. We all gave Scottie Pippen his love back in them days, man. We all recognize Scottie Pippen, man. And we still do. So shout out to Scottie Pippen, man. Shout out to his fans, man. Shout out to Chicago Bulls of the 90s. Shout out to Michael Jordan, man. You guys know the deal, man. I'll catch you on the next one.